it's quite delicate stuff to work with so be quite gentle with it you don't have to press it too hard the slightest mark will the slightest bit of pressure will leave a mark in Milliput so we'll add even more cracks in there just to help emphasize that there's something alive growing through this <clears throat> you can also use green stuff for tentacles I use Milliput because the tents are set hard um, and I never handle a figure once it's been done if you're going to use it for gaming green stuff's better because as you'll know it dries kind of like a hard rubber and if you're going to move this around the table these tusks might snap so we're going to add tentacles now same sort of thing pick it up at the bottom <clears throat> the weight of itself is already curling it which is ideal all you do then is you pick up one of the clay shaper tools press it about a bit until you get a nice lively shape it will hold its shape like green stuff I like to lie tentacles on the ground pointing upwards not only does it help to support them it also looks like they're feeling their way along the earth another one there next to it we'll have a bunch of three in here this one reaching upwards and finally the third one I'm going to have reaching over the last two it's important you do it this way I think for tentacles it gives them a sense of life and movement it looks like they're all struggling with each other trying to get to the surface at once I usually just level it off like that that will provide something to drill into um, to mount your figure onto at a later stage I'm going to mount this purely and simply with super glue, that's it so the super glue is going to go on the bottom you can use quite a bit because it's got a contact well and it's quite absorbent this stuff I usually add it just over one side because we'll trim that rock around to contour the shape of the base kind of like with what we did with the alien landscape so I'm going to add a little bit of accelerator to this just to speed things along now you can seal this stuff with PVA glue um, I often seal it with I often seal it with super glue as well it's just as good that's stuck on there now you can probably see there that it's actually melted a bit of the black base that accelerator that's normal doesn't matter that base is not soft now anymore um, it will only strip a very slight layer off and remember you can always sand the bases any fingerprints or anything that are on there you can always sand your bases which is what I always do before I paint them anyway so I'm going to trim this to roughly the round shape very very easy to do just watch your fingers they always say cut away from you but personally I don't think that you get much control that way it's often more dangerous to cut away from you um, than it is to cut towards you as long as you're well practiced you're very sensible at what you're doing you take your time if there's not a problem with it all you do is you submerge it in the tub like that in a, in a pan of shallow water now boiled water from the kettle's fine it says to use it to a certain temperature but I always found that you freshly boil water from the kettle put it in a pan or a dish let that sit in it and what actually happens is this stuff inside is a set jelly and that will melt that will actually remelt itself to a very very watery substance you'll pour that on the base where you want it as it cools it will set again and there you have a perfect water base so we'll show you that as we get to it what I want to do is I'll seal those edges off and I'll add some gravel and then we'll come back ready for the sands on I've now added it to the center of where the stream's going to be because these bases are already quite textured um, I'm just going to add the water in there a little bit later what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill several small holes um, more so along the, the wider side and on the narrow side maybe just a couple so we're going to drill them in with a hand drill I use these thick ended drills for such like a dremel um, because you can use them without actually having to stoke up a pin vise 
So I've got them in there. I'm not going to paint any of these bases because we've shown you about painting in the Fundamentals DVD. Uh, the techniques apply to these the same as everything else. Right, so this is our basic materials. Again, the plastic strip and rod stock. I've also got this stuff. This is lead foil. Again, it's available from most model shops. You can also get it via the internet fairly easily. It's also to be found on champagne bottle tops. You can actually use that stuff as well. Um, only that's not lead, that's an aluminium foil. It's exactly the same stuff. The most important thing is it will hold its shape when bent and it's very, very soft. I've got two quite nice small drill bits here, varying diameters. Um, we're not actually going to be drilling with these, we're going to be making rivets. Um, this is very simple to do. All you do is put your lead foil flat, the opposite end, not the cutting end of the drill bit, the opposite end that would normally go into the drill. Press it in and then lift up the lead foil and there you have a rivet. It's a perfect domed head rivet. All you do is you flip that over, dip it in a drop of super glue and then apply it to the base. We're going to be using a lot more of them a little bit later. And this neat bit of the kit is a compass cutter. Um, it works the same way as, um, as a compass would enabling you to draw circles, um, only this has got a blade instead of a, a, a graphite tip. So this will actually enable you to cut circles. So we're going to measure the base. We want, this is a 40mm base, so we, you know that it's preset to 40mm. We want it about that sort of size. All you do is you lock it, and then that will help us cut out a circle of plastic card. We can have as many circles to the correct diameter as you like then. So, I'm going to cut some circles and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to build the base. I've got some very thin rod here that I've shown you before. You can actually make this stuff out of stretch sprue, you don't necessarily have to buy it. And all we're going to do is we're going to join two pieces together, like that was a couple of armoured plates that have been welded together. So I'm going to use an old paintbrush and the glue that we're showing you in the fundamentals DVD, the plastic weld, this stuff's very, very good. If you've seen the first one, you'll know what it does. It's uh, ideal for what we want to do to replicate these weld scenes. We're literally just going to blob some on there, and we're going to add in that plastic rod. And we're going to soak the rod in the plastic weld. Now what that will do is it will soften the plastic as well. So when it's dry, don't bother about that, that end section yet. When it's dry, we'll trim that off. So now what we've got, if you press into it, you'll see it will start to form a bead on either side. That's what we want to form the weld seam. So I'm going to refresh on that. It's quite warm today, so it's drying very, very quickly. So I'll freshen this up. And next what we want to do is we want to use the knife. You see the blade tip's actually gone there. That's purposeful for this, this point in the base because what we want to do is make slight impressions very, very closely together all along that rod. This is what's going to form the welded seam. So the icicles have been added now. And as you can see, it's also started to snow a little bit. So what I'm going to do is show you how to apply the snow correctly. The icicles are just stuck on with super glue. Um, it's important to use a good brand like Loctite because otherwise they can turn the plastic white, um, which isn't too bad for icicles, but not very good on a finished figure. So I'd like to try and keep those icicles clear if I can. Um, I've added a drop of varnish over them uh, so they look more like a single structure, a random structure rather than bits of plastic that have been stuck on. You can actually see there's actually tiny air bubbles in them as well. So they look really, really good. Next, uh, I've started to add snow, like I say. I'll show you that now. I've added varnish. This is gloss varnish because it's actually going to give us a nice, crispy, almost, almost ice-like coat underneath it when it dries. Um, plus, it's a lot stickier when it's drying than matte varnish.